All right, good evening, everybody. So tonight I wanted to do just kind of a quick update on what my next plans were. And it's kind of ironic because I received an email today from Signature Solar stating that they've reviewed the ticket that I have submitted and they want to RMA my inverters due to the issues that I've been experiencing. So that actually kind of works out well for timing because some of these projects that I needed to undertake would require me to shut the system down completely so that I could do some work on it. Now, I'm not really sure as to if there's one specific issue that they're referring to or if just it's the accumulation of all the issues that I've been talking to support about, but it, uh, well, it, it's all working out. And on top of that, it's Christmas break for my son, so he can come downstairs and help me do a lot of the work and get everything taken out and then start working on some of the other stuff. He's actually looking forward to it because he's he's had so much homework that he's had to do that he hasn't been able to come down and help me with any of the solar stuff and he really enjoys doing that so you might see him in a couple of the next videos just doing some work helping me out so i'm not gonna go through and, and bore you with tearing everything down and, and videoing all that because i don't need that for any of my documentation before i get into what my plans are for some changes that i'm going to be making uh First off, let me just say I am honestly surprised that there are 360-some crazy people out there that actually want to watch what I'm doing. <laughs> um, when I put this stuff out there, I thought, hey, it's free storage for me. I can record the videos, I can have it for footage for archival purposes, and I don't have to store it on my hard drives because video storage takes up a ton of space so why not record it and put it out there and if the videos that i make can be a help to somebody you know that's that's great but that's not really my goal um if you like it great if you hate it you're entitled to your opinion i mean i don't care <laughs> YouTube is basically my big hard drive. So, for those of you that have actually subscribed and actually want to follow along on my crazy rants and everything, because trust me, I've edited my videos. I know how long my rants can be, and I can't stand hearing myself talk, so I can't believe that there's so many out there that want to hear me talk the entire time. Why do you think I put a lot of background music and do time lapses a lot? <laughs> um, but for those of you that are following along, thanks a lot. It's, it's not something that I actually expected to happen. So enjoy the journey. Because I sure am. You know, the ups, the downs. It's fun. I enjoy it. I mean, even, even the problems. Uh, it gets me into something new lets me troubleshoot diagnose whatever and i enjoy that kind of stuff all right so one of the first changes that i was looking to make is all of my pv lines are coming into this pv conduit here they come down into this almost a box right now but you can see the the lines are just kind of looped right now because they didn't have a permanent box and even up here in uh, one of my, well, a couple of my previous videos, uh, you know, we've got the conduit coming in with the solar lines coming inside. And after a few comments and some of my own research and looking at uh, PV lines inside the building, I came to see through the uh, NEC code that when your PV lines come into the building, they need to be in some kind of a metal conduit until they get to the first disconnect point. And so... I know some people have it that way, some people don't, but with the voltages that I'm messing with, I'd rather be safe than sorry. What you, you don't see is 
this conduit right here that comes into this, uh, I believe it's a C connector, I think. This is inch and a quarter PVC that actually goes through that rim joist right there. But then there's a crawl space on the other side of the wall there. So it's actually another 10 feet or so of inch and a quarter till it comes outside. So I'm going to replace the, that whole 10 foot section and then all the uh, PVC in here with solar lines in it. And that'll include everything over top of the ductwork coming down here. And I'm actually going to look at mounting this box right in here. So the metal conduit will come right down, terminate directly into the top of the box, run through the breakers, and then I'm going to actually have it punch through the side right here, right into this raceway and come over and I'm gonna have two three quarter inch conduit coming right up, going straight into the inverters on both. Uh, I have a new tool showing up within the next couple of days, which is gonna help with putting holes inside the raceway. Before I send these inverters back, I wanna try and get a template made of the holes across the bottom of the inverter so that I can just lay the template down on the raceway and punch those holes out and have it all ready to go, get my distance measured and everything, so that when the new inverters show up, uh, I'll have everything ready to go. So that's one of the changes that I'm looking to make. And it, like I said, it actually works out great time-wise, uh, having to send these inverters back and get new ones sent out. Now the second change, I don't know if I'm gonna actually be able to do it right now or not. Um, I could actually use some some help, some thoughts from you guys, see what you think. So if we come over here to my AC output panel, which is this one right here, my AC input panel is right here. My AC output panel, you can see I have the double pull breaker here, which is my inverter feed coming from the two inverters. The double pull up here is the feed that goes out to my sub panel. But then I have these other four breakers in here. Uh, one's for the laundry room. One's for a bank of outlets that I have right down there. This one is the garbage disposal. And this one is the wood boiler outside. Now, I've known for a while that... If I ever had to shut the inverters down, any breakers that I put in this panel will not be hot until the inverters have power again. So I've been toying around with actually just putting in a manual transfer switch that would allow me to power this panel either from the inverters or from grid power because I still need to be able to power these loads. I mean, these inverters are going to be gone for, I think, shipping. When they were shipped here, it took about three days to get here from Texas. So, I mean, you're potentially looking at a week down and I can't have my wood boiler not have power for a week. Laundry room, eh probably wouldn't fly. I can get away with that one. Garbage disposal, yeah, I can get away with that. But these two, um, I can't get away with leaving those off for a week, especially this one in winter time. What I'm probably gonna end up doing is just some janky daisy chain or even throwing a temporary junction box up here and run a line down into my input panel just so that those two outlets or those two breakers have power or those two circuits have power because I've got these four here these four in this input panel are strictly sealing up the holes what do you think about um, you know a manual transfer switch to allow for times where you need to shut the system down and do work and you still need to supply power. I actually want to add 
my well circuit in here and potentially a few other circuits from another panel that's currently powered by the grid directly. But unless I have a way that I can easily switch this panel to have grid power when the inverters are shut down, I can't move anything else in here. So I guess, what are your thoughts? Um, I know I might have to do some rejiggering with, with um, spacing and everything, but that's, that's something that I need to figure out. How do I power this panel properly in the event that I need to take these inverters down? And the last thing that I'm looking to do, and this is probably another thing that's not gonna happen anytime soon, but it's, it's in the plans for me to be able to make this change is, I know from, I believe, code standpoint, you need to have an AC disconnect on the outside of your house within 10 feet of your meter base so that in the event that there's a fire, power can be disconnected from the grid and power can be disconnected from your inverters, thus making it safe for firefighters. And you might stop and think, why are you talking about this? Well, let me tell you a story. <laughs> it's probably been a few weeks now, maybe a month or so. I won't go into too much details, but we ended up having a brush fire from some open burning done by a neighbor. The brush fire got out of control and got very close to the house. And if it was not for some uh, quick work by myself and my other neighbor, uh, my house might not be here. And the the fire getting out of control was an accident and and it's it's all past now so i mean now it's a great story but it, it really kind of points me to the need for having that disconnect because if god forbid my house did catch fire and firefighters needed to come to my house and start hosing things down they could turn off the grid power but there'd still be ac power in the house and it could endanger the firefighters so that little experience, we'll, we'll say that, just kind of illuminated the need for putting that disconnect on the outside of the house so that that switch can be flipped and AC power will be completely disconnected. And I'm also gonna be working on putting some PV disconnects, probably the little IMO boxes outside by the panels or various junction points for PV disconnects outside of the house as well. Um, but that's that's kind of where I'm I'm going right now. Like I said, it's it's some of that stuff's not going to be right away because it it all costs money, and everything's getting expensive right now. And I, I'm not telling you anything new. So. Those are just a few things looking to go forward on. Like I said, the, the conduit changes I'll actually be doing while these inverters are getting replaced. And hopefully Ian will be able to help me with, with those changes over the next few, I'm hoping only a couple of days, but I've, I've never successfully bent conduit before. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes. And then I need to decide proper sizing that I need for conduit inside because uh, right now I'm still running you see over my shoulder right there that's still inch and a quarter coming around and I don't really want to try and deal with bending inch and a quarter uh, or having to buy 90s for inch and a quarter so I'm probably going to end up terminating into a junction box and then downsizing my conduit size before it gets over here to the inverters. Once I get some of these other changes uh, taken care of once I get these uh, inverters replaced. I've got a few other um, tests that I want to run, you know, certain circuits and certain uh, appliances or, or tools that I want to try and see if these inverters can run. 
One of them is my Shopsmith. In my barn, my old 2200 watt system would not run the Shopsmith because of the surge. So I'm gonna be very curious to see if if these EG4s can run that Shopsmith. But that'll all come after we get the new ones put in. Well, I just wanted to make this, this little quick update. I know from, from my rambling, quick is relative. Um, you guys have the luxury of fast forwarding. I don't. So with that, I'm gonna let y'all go. Uh, from what I understand, this video should probably drop Saturday morning. So uh, let me say from my family to yours, I hope y'all have a great Christmas and enjoy it. Uh, I think we're supposed to be getting quite a bit of snow coming down, at least we're, we're a few days out, but I think we might get, uh, what do they call it, like six to eight inches after we get some rain and then a flash freeze and then some wind. So it should be a white Christmas. We'll, we'll put it like that. So uh, y'all have a great uh, Christmas time. Y'all stay safe, stay warm, and we'll catch up with you later.